Nolagent here for Antoine's Restaurant. Another Friday fun time in New Orleans. Yeah! Welcome to Nolagent. Let the good times roll. In this episode of our Restaurant Review Vlog, we visit Antoine's Restaurant for a traditional New Orleans lunch with a group of New Orleans gents. Antoine's is located in the French Quarter at 713 St. Louis Street. New Orleans has a lot of great old restaurants in the city, and many of those are in the New Orleans French Quarter, and the oldest restaurant in New Orleans is Antoine's. Join me for a visit to the New Orleans French Quarter at Antoine's as we enjoy this veritable New Orleans Creole Food Museum for our restaurant review video. In this New Orleans Creole Food video, we will enjoy lunch and find the answer to a New Orleans mystery located inside one of Antoine's French Quarter dining rooms. And we already have a bunch of the NOLA gents here at the bar already. Here's the Bishop, already with his drink in hand, having a good time as we explore the outside of Antoine's. But we're going to go back inside here, and we have to go inside, which by New Orleans standards is the new Hermes bar of Antoine's. They turned one of their dining rooms into this great bar. So, on the grand scale of things, this is a new bar in New Orleans. So, it's a nice little space, but we're just going to do a quick walk through and go into the dining room through the bar area here. So, Antoine's Restaurant is not just the oldest restaurant in New Orleans, as it is also the oldest family-run restaurant in the USA. This restaurant had its start when Antoine Elciator immigrated from France and opened what came to be known as Antoine's Restaurant in 1840. And the restaurant is still owned and operated by fifth generation relatives of the original founder. Antoine's has become world renowned for their French Creole cuisine, impeccable service, and unique atmosphere that have created a legendary dining experience in New Orleans since 1840. Antoine's is the birthplace of such culinary classics as Oyster Rockefeller, Ex Sardeau, and Pommes de Terre Souffle. In this episode, we're not going to be sampling any of those dishes as we have a special lunch we're going to be eating today instead, but we'll probably make another video to go back and review some of those special items that they created here at Antoine's. And you may have already noticed that there is just history all over the place in this restaurant. There are just all manner of very historical documents and items relating to New Orleans but here's a mystery. What do you think this little tool is here? This is a very interesting device. Comment below if you know what it is. And if you don't, we'll reveal what it is at the end of this video. So stay tuned for more information on that. Now, as we look around this dining room, this is one of many. So we're located in the 1840 dining room, which is one of around 14 private dining rooms. We're going to explore a few of the other dining rooms today, but we're not going to get upstairs where there's a whole other group of rooms. So here's the Proteus room. So Proteus is one of the carnival crews, and a lot of these rooms downstairs are named after different carnival crews. A crew is simply an organization and group of people that uh, get together to do things during carnival time. Some do parades, some don't. Some do balls, some don't. So it's just a group of people. Now Proteus does both a ball and a parade, and they're a fun group, so this is a great room to check out. And then here we're going to see all of these great carnival decorations. Next is the Escargot Room, which you might guess a big focus in here is on the Escargot, the snail right there. So this is a fun little room with more memorabilia. So all of these rooms have a lot of history, a lot of great stuff to see, and they're a lot of fun to check out. So it's definitely a good time to get a tour of this place if you can. Uh, the tours aren't always available, but you can always request a tour of these dining rooms. And uh, sometimes they can accommodate you, sometimes they can't, depending on how crowded it is and what time of year it is as well. So uh, we've also got a great wine cellar here that's a legendary thing in Antoine's. Their wine cellar really is an amazing place in here. Sometimes you can tour that. This is the Tabasco Room, named for the Tabasco Red Color. It's uh, also known as the Last Room Dining Room, as it was the last room to be named at Antoine's. And we have the Rex Room, and Rex is the king of carnival, so this is 
one of the most famous Mardi Gras crews, and they do one of the big parades on Mardi Gras day in the morning. So they have quite a nice little dining room in here with a lot of great historical stuff, and they've got some other rooms and different restaurants around the city too, because they have been around a long time. So Rex is known as King of Carnivals, so you get a lot of royal treatment in this room. And it's really pretty, and it's got the Mardi Gras colors of purple, green, and gold. And we have another little nice hallway to go through, and there's a larger dining room area right here. So it's really great to finally see people out and about again after the long pandemic lockdown. So I'm so happy to be back eating in restaurants instead of being locked down. It's nice to have things going on. Well, we're back at our table now. We're going to eat some of this delicious French bread and take a look at the menu. So for appetizers, we have Antoine Seafood Duo, we have Creole Andouille Sausage Gratin and Smoked Pompano Dip. Then we have Soup and Salad with Seafood Gumbo, Antoine Salad, Roasted Chicken and Bacon Salad. And we have Antoine's Lunch Special, choose one selection per course, $20.20. Course 1, Charbroiled Oysters, Warm Autumn Salad. Course 2, Fried Picnic Chicken, Ville Renoir. Course 3, Antoine's Bread Pudding. Then we have the lunch entrees with classic fish amadine, creole shrimp bowl, Antoine's burger, smoked ham and sage quiche, petit filet with marchand du vent, and dessert flowers chocolate torte, Antoine's bread pudding, jubilee cheesecake. So we finished looking at the menu and the service was a little bit slow so we were waiting to put our order in and just kept eating a little more of this delicious french bread. And I'm uh, sitting here next to the senator, and he's hungry too. Ooh, ready to eat. So, ready to put our orders in and get started with this party. Ooh. So, we're going to have some fun in here. The senator likes his cocktail, and I like my beer. So, we're having a good time for a lunch. It's a lot of fun with our group of gents in here. But, ooh, I'm so happy I got an order up for my gumbo. And it's time to enjoy some delicious seafood gumbo so let's see what all's in here hmm okay we got some shrimp some okra ooh, some tomatoes ah let's see i'm not seeing any crab meat in here so it looks like it's mostly a shrimp okra gumbo with some tomatoes many occasions consider tomatoes and gumbo a sin now here's the oysters the senator got you liking those? Pretty good? I'm liking those, yeah. Are they all the same baked oyster or you got different flavors? Oh, these are all charbroiled. All charbroiled, though, yeah. I'm a little bit sad I didn't get some oysters, too, because oysters are always a great idea. And often you will get oysters in your gumbo, and it is the oysters time of year, so I'm a little bit sad. There's no oysters or crab in my gumbo, but it's still a good gumbo with just the shrimp and uh, okra. So, it's an enjoyable uh, gumbo overall, although they could kick it up with some oysters and crab next time. Now, a lot of people at the table got the fried chicken, and all reports are this is a fantastic fried chicken, even to our friend there, Bones. <laughs> okay, so I got the shrimp creole. Let's see how it tastes. This looks like a good version. And here's the veal that the bishop got. Mm. Okay, so these shrimp have their tails on it, which some people get freaked out by tails on their shrimp. But all you have to do, you just pick it up and pinch it on the end, and they come right out, no problem. So that way you know they're uh, more fresh and not necessarily the uh, frozen preserved ones. Although I think now they sell frozen ones with the uh, tails too. Also got a nice little onion ring uh, on top of here, so that's a nice little extra touch. I've never had an onion ring on top of my shrimp creole before, so that's a neat little spin on things. So I have not seen this before, but hey, I'm always up for an onion ring. Mm. Okay, so these are some nice shoestring onion rings, all good. Now I've got some greenery on top of there too, so I guess I can see I'm getting all my vegetables with a little greenery, some tomatoes and the shrimp creole. Ooh. Now this is a uh, chunky tomato shrimp creole. So many different varieties of shrimp creole. Every place does their own unique version. Some are more saucy, some are more chunky. So it's always a nice variety with shrimp creole. There's so many different varieties of them. And these are a good size of shrimp as well. So this is definitely, I would say, the uh, standard minimum size for shrimp creole generally in most restaurants. 
that I've eaten at for a very tasty, delicious shrimp creole. Some places have done tiny little itty bitty size, but I've definitely have polished off this dish really fast. And there's some really good flavors in there. You can see it's chock full of some bell pepper and onions. So it's a really great mix in here. It's almost, uh, what some people might call a salsa, I guess. Mm. Except there's no jalapenos. So now that I've destroyed my shrimp creole, we'll go ahead and destroy the subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up and comment below. Let me know what you thought about this video so far. So the senator got bread pudding for dessert, and I got the cheesecake for dessert. So it's everybody's favorite time now, dessert. Ooh, now this cheesecake is uh, not the normal size of cheesecake of a slice. It's its own little independent cake with some uh, nice fruit here. So this does look pretty delicious. And mm, okay, it does taste good. So I'll give that a smash of that subscribe button and a thumbs up for this cheesecake too. Does have some good flavors in here, and that's a little uh, mint leaf on top. So a nice little combination of flavors here. All goes together well. Most people at the table got the bread pudding though, but I uh, was one of the few people that went for the cheesecake because I needed a little more cheese and cake in my life, right? And some fruit. So it's a pretty good combination. I think I'm liking this a lot more than I would a bread pudding. So. I might be a uh, cheesecake fan above and beyond a bread pudding fan. So put me on team cheesecake. Ooh, yes. So this is a good meal so far. Now, uh, it's not the best meal I've had. And usually for these special menus, it's not generally the uh, top of the selection choices generally, but you usually get a little better discount deal on what these are. Now comes the time for shock and awe as we get the bill total of all of our meals together was $910.27. And that's before tip and more than half of it was for alcohol. These gents put the drinks down. So we have some more of the dining rooms to look at. This is the dungeon room. So another interesting place to check out if you want some private dining. And then coming up here's the mystery room. This room got its name back during Prohibition, when in those days you used to have to enter through a secret door in the women's restroom, and you got a coffee cup filled with booze. And if anybody asked you where you received the alcohol, the expected response was, it's a mystery to me. So, there's a lot of great, interesting history of all varieties in this restaurant. And it really is a fascinating place to just look at. And if you add on a good meal on top of it, it adds even more to the enjoyment. Now here's the entrance to the kitchen right here. And there's just so much history and so much to see and do here. And uh, if you can get a group of people together and book one of the fantastic and amazing dining rooms, that really adds to the fun. And we'll peek into uh, this main dining room right here. That's where most of the tourists usually uh, end up sitting at. But the upstairs is also a whole different world. So you should definitely try to take a look at the upstairs. We don't have time to do that in this video today. Uh, just like we don't have time to sample all of those wonderful dishes that Antoine's invented. But we'll have to make a return visit as there's just so much to see here. And so long to the Hermes Bar, which is also named after a New Orleans Carnival crew. And what a fantastic old school place Antoine's restaurant is. Now all the gents are running off to have some more fun throughout the French Quarter because we've been locked up too long and we're ready to get out and about. And so as we look off into Antoine's in the distance, just go ahead and smash that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and comment below and let me know what you thought about this video. And while you're down there, check out the link to my Patreon account because, hey, I do work for tips. And not to forget, we did have a little mystery to cover. So what do you think this object is? If you guessed that it's a duck press, you're right. And comment below if you think we should come back and do another video and use this duck press for some of that interesting dish called pressed duck. So thanks for all of you out there for watching and especially to my Patreons. And thanks so much to Antoine's for so many years of fantastic food great experiences and make sure to click on that little circle with my head in it to subscribe and click on one of the next videos with little rectangles on either side of my head 
And tune in next time for more good food, good times, and good people.